What's up folks, it's Chili here. Today I only have one thing to say. Gorge is the best map in the game for competitive team games. And let me tell you why. Team games in general are kind of an oversight in AOE4. The balancing department is clearly focused on 1v1 games primarily, which is why most team game maps are just the same 1v1 map, but just larger, blown up to extreme proportions. What ends up happening then is that your nearest opponent is like a light year away. And by the time you reach their base with your Dark Age Spear Rush, not only is their entire side stonewalled, but they just hit the Imperial Age. I'm of course exaggerating, but also kind of not really. The maps are just ridiculously big, and this has the obvious effect of slowing down games significantly. It's very common for many of these maps to just tend towards late game slogs, which I absolutely hate. It's like actual torture. And on top of that, players are super isolated. If my ally gets attacked, I don't really feel it. I'm content just tunneling in and focusing on my own shit. I don't really feel any pressure from what's happening on their side of the map. I mean, it's an RTS, so there's so many things going on with your own shit that you almost never have time to look at what's happening over on the other side of the map anyway. And on top of that, the way that the maps are designed, most of these team games split into two 2v2s, which means that you're not really communicating or working together with the whole team. This takes away from the grandeur of those large pitch battles with multiple armies, which is what I signed up for in the first place when I tried to queue up for a 4v4. Gorge, on the other hand, completely shakes the mold. Rather than placing the teammates far apart from one another, everyone is actually grouped together so tightly, in fact, that you're actually sharing the same resources, sharing the same wood line, the same gold vein, the same hunts. This means that if my ally gets raided, not only do I care because I'm right next to him and I could be next, but I can probably see his villagers dying on the edge of my screen while I'm looking at my own stuff. And the enemy team is also very close by as well. This heavily encourages everyone on the team to work together in a coordinated push or a coordinated defense. We see a lot more early game aggression on Gorge compared to other team game maps. Strategizing together in a Discord call on a Gorge game is probably one of the funnest and most competitive things that you can do in AoE 4. You can figure out who specializes in what and coordinate a timing attack where everyone's pushing up together at the same time. And when it happens and you see all the cogs spinning together, it's absolutely majestic. In fact, I like it so much that I'm thinking about hosting a mini tournament, 4v4, Gorge only. The AoE4 community is currently drastically lacking in large team game tournaments, and I think it could be a good bit of fun to try it out. Now, I haven't set things up yet, I'm just trying to gauge interest. If you think you'd find something like this interesting, please let me know. As a beta test, I organized a 4v4 Gorge in-house with some friends on the Discord server, and I thought it was a ton of fun to cast. It was a very action-packed game, and I'll play it for you now so that you can see what I'm talking about. Anyways, just let me know what you think. Would you want to see a Gorge team game tournament? Let me know in the comments below and until next time, stay frosty out there, stay chilly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an exciting show match today. Uh, this is something that we're doing for the first time, never been done before. It is a 4v4 in-house on the map Gorge. Gorge is easily the best map in the game uh, right now for team games. And the reason why is because, and actually, can I actually change it to a different, I can't do caster mode. Okay, all right, we're gonna have to watch it in the regular spectator mode, unfortunately. But the reason why Gorge is the best map in the game is because uh, everyone on the same team is organized together. They are all stacked in this vertical line just like this and if we reveal the whole map you'll see that the enemy team is also stacked in a vertical line on the other side as well. Uh, everyone is very very tightly close together uh, so much so that you're actually sharing the same resources. Uh, as you can see uh, blue over here is sharing the same gold vein with uh, with green. Green is sharing this gold vein with yellow etc etc. So you're actually sharing resources so if one player on your team gets raided, gets raided, you don't get to just ignore that. You actually have to pay attention and see what's happening and help each other out. Another cool thing is that because you are so close to the enemy team here, like they're just across the pond right here, uh, it means that it it's really, really easy to get aggressed on early. And as we can see, we can see from this map generation, the team on the south side, uh, let's go over all the civs here. We have uh, Vi Violis uh, playing the Malians in the color orange. Followed by, in the color pink, we have OMG Pagey playing the English, one of his main civs. Now, keep in mind, Violus, I want to call out, uh, one of my friends on this on this Discord server, he is very new uh, to Age of Empires, still uh, sub-level 30, actually. He just started this game basically like a, like a week ago, so uh, welcome him into the game. He actually came in from uh, Age of Empires 2. Um, now, Pagey uh, has been playing for a little while now, but still relatively new to the game, uh, and in comparison, we have Mr. Roger you know, one of the veterans of the game on, on this on, within this friend group at least playing his classic Jushi's legacy he's a Chinese player and we'll have to see how the Jushi perform uh, given their recent nerfs in this January 2024 patch uh, followed by the teal player which is Flame 
Flame is also relatively newbish at this game, playing the Japanese. Uh, on the other side of the map is in the color blue, we have Real Drilla. He's not actually a real Drilla in real life, he's actually just a normal guy. Um, but <laughs> He is playing the English, one of his classic sips, and he's already forgetting to build villagers, so that's a good sign. Um, and then followed by the human missile, uh, a, a dedicated English main, plays nothing but the English, although he's starting to main the roost now recently. And he's going for an Abbey of Kings. This is going to be a very interesting direction uh, for, for Pizza here. Uh, at, or he's called the human missile in game but we call him pizza on the discord server so i, m I might be referring to him as pizza every now and then um and then up next is in the color yellow we have ramen benjamin uh uh, playing the Ottomans, his main sieve. Now, the Ottomans got a lot of buffs in this recent patch, um, even though they were already in a pretty strong state, if you ask anyone with a breathing uh, pulse. Um, and then lastly, we have Lithium, aka Lol Sheep Lol, uh, also known as Jesse. He is in the color purple, playing the Japanese. Uh, his main sieve, as you can see, he already got the Daimyo Palace. He's mining that stone, going for a 2TC Japan in the far back here. Now, Let's take a look at the scouting so far. So far, nothing too dramatic is happening. Um, the game is still just warming up. And I was going to talk about something earlier, but I don't remember what I was going to say. Um, something about the fact that there is a lot of potential for early game aggression. Oh yeah, let's take a look at this map spawn here. So this map spawn is kind of interesting. The orange player, uh, the Molly player Violus here, uh, also known as Harrison, uh, he actually, oh, oh, he's doing the great migration with his woodcutters. We don't like to see that. Hopefully he builds a lumber mill soon. Um, but what's really cool about this map spawn is that it's a bit uneven. Uh, he's actually got this wood line protecting him from the front here, whereas our blue player, Real Drilla, on the other side, does not have have anything protecting his uh his 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 base here basically when the enemy approaches him he's just going to be it's just going to be his town center immediately which is a huge disadvantage to him however if he's able to just fight around his town center and as you know the english player english players like fighting around their town centers they get the network of castles buff uh this is not necessarily going to be a bad thing for him on the other hand the forward malian character uh the forward malian position is a bit unfortunate since molly really likes going for their cow boom and if that cow boom gets stopped which is likely to be, be the case if they're in the front line uh this player is going to be having a very hard time one of the things that age of empires 4 lacks is the fact that you cannot uh actually uh, you cannot actually set which position that you want to have uh, when you're organizing a team game, even if it's a custom game, which is very, very frustrating because obviously on a map like this, it would make a lot of sense to say, put the English player in the front, put the Malian player in the middle or in the far back, or or even the Chinese player in the far back. So that way you have your boomy sieves in the back, you have your defensive sieves in the front, and you can actually strategize around that. Uh, I feel like that would add a lot more compelling gameplay. Instead, the southern team just kind of gets fucked by the roll of the die, which is a bit unfortunate. Now, we do see the Saharan Trade Network already coming up for uh, Harrison here uh, in a very defensive position right next to the town center. I really like this position because what this means is that he gets a ton of vision. Uh, actually, it's a bit small. I guess it's a bit too close to the town center, but what it does is gives him a lot of defensive advantages. 10 garrison uh, uh, slots here, as along with 15 in the town center, meaning that even if he gets pushed on, his villagers will be able to shoot uh, any enemies coming down into this town center range to high hell. Now, uh, I mentioned before, Harrison is a relatively new player, so it is a bit unfortunate that he's not still not building a lumber camp. If you play this game, you have to understand that you want your villagers walking as little as possible. We finally see the lumber camp coming up, uh, no longer doing the Great Migration, pretty soon uh and if you know anything about west african history if you're playing molly there was the great fulani migration the great also known as the great fulani jihad where a lot of fulani uh, members actually immigrated from west the western coast of west africa over into northern nigeria uh this is around the 1700s i'm a bit of a history nerd uh this is what that reminds me of this is such a big migration that it makes me think of a historical migration that happened to the Fulani people, um, which is what the great Grand Fulani uh, Corral is named after. Also, an early archer range, which is really good for stopping any kind of aggression from longbowmen. Now, keep in mind, we do have two English players on the other side of the map with a very interestingly placed wall here. Uh, Pranav seems to be interested in defending his back line. He doesn't want any raiders coming into his backside saying, hey, welcome to my base. I want you to funnel all of your units into my town center here where I can easily defend. Uh, we also see a very early archer range. See, here's the thing, okay? He built an archer range, but he also has a council hall. So 
Uh, very weird choice here because the Council Hall does serve as a archer range that produces 100% faster. So why would if he's not even able to sustain production from one uh, Council Hall, why does he need a second archer range? This wood could have been used for other things like upgrades or gathering other resources. Now another thing that uh, that our our boy Harrison over there uh, playing the Molly is going to be disappointed with is that uh, he was expecting an art early archer raid, but instead of that happening, we actually see Pizza, the second English player, going for horsemen, uh, meaning that he will be able to counter any potential javelins uh, javelin throwers coming in and we actually see his king already moving in to raid uh, the enemy Chinese player or Jushi player Roger Reno he's not gonna be too happy about that but so far not losing too much uh, although that being said I cannot quite see uh, I guess we can see the kills right here uh, let's see if that's, that's a first villager down might even be the second villager down now that I see that uh, Green has actually killed two uh, units already. And keep in mind, these games are roughly speaking at a plat level. This is not a very high elo game. Oh, okay, we already see a, a scout dead for the pink player. OMG Pagey lost his scout early on here, likely due to some aggression by the blue player here. And actually, let me see if I can toggle fog yeah there we go that might be a little bit easier so i'll toggle fog, fog on and off using my key bindings here do, we do see the king getting chased away by chinese horsemen so very early chinese horsemen uh coming in from roger oh wow actually a really strong setup by the jushi player here two archer rangers along with two stables along with the john nan tower which is a really great landmark that allows uh, that automatically spawns a free unit whenever you uh, build a military production building so those two horsemen are coming out a lot earlier for free because uh, Rogerino was able to rush that wood and get two stables up. Uh, at the same time, he's actually sending two additional horsemen to raid over on the other side of the map. Uh, we do see that he spotted this early wall from Pranav here saying, I'm a little bit frustrated that I can't raid into the back of the base as I, as I would like. You wanted me to come into your base, Pranav, so therefore I'm coming in. Let's see what you got here. And Pranav currently not quite defending his base, but there's a lot of longbows. That's one horseman down. That might be even a second horseman down. This is a very strong defensive position here this king over here from pizza is still not really doing much um running around uh not able to get any good raids off because of rogerino's strong defense here we do see some druganu already making it to the front of the base along with this cow boom already starting to manifest in the back of harrison's base now that being said this cow boom positioning you don't have a lot of real estate to build all of your pat uh, all of your cattle ranches you do want the grand filani corral placed right here in the back of this town center where it's nice and tucked in very defensive able to surround uh, able to be surrounded by all of the uh cow ranchers right next to it it would have been nicer if he actually went for building this uh this these ranches in the back of his team's base maybe even as far back as uh flames base over here uh where the cows will not likely be disturbed while they're in the front we already see he's facing a lot of pressure from pranav uh a lot of longbow mass coming in here that's three druganu down already if we look at the military kills here that's six units killed total by pranav a lot of uh strong aggression from the uh english player on the front here at in the back we see green uh pizza mentioned earlier he he was building those the king he was building those horsemen he's he's going for the english raiding strategy we see two contingents of horsemen one in the front and one in the back he's saying none of you guys are going to be able to play this game as you want you don't get to boom unless i allow it and unless i allow it and i am not gonna allow it you'll, you interestingly enough we see that the walls in the front of uh pranav's base here has done a really big service to the back of uh his, his team's base where they're able to just boom uh, without any virtually any harassment we see the chinese horsemen finally making it around but they had to go the long way around severely delaying their raid uh meaning that there might be defenders up in time to stop it um at the same uh, on the other hand the on the other side of the map uh green is just raiding with impunity that being said green is now getting raided his attention is likely all over the place now looking at his base so he will uh, have to focus on his base he can't quite focus on the two squadrons of horsemen that he has running around we do see raids seceding uh ceasing on the other side oh we do see early spahi coming in from our yellow player a very interesting choice along oh that's painful he's getting the mehmed imperial academy up but at the same time there's so many horsemen here raiding him losing a lot of villagers so this is a very interesting play from the ottoman player he's got spearmen defending his woodline but they're not defending the landmark i'm wondering if ben is even noticing that he's getting raided here it doesn't seem like he's actually paying attention uh maybe because he's trying to micro the spahi in the front line that being said blue is getting a powerful raid up in the front killing on yet another villager completely harassing this woodline i mentioned earlier that this woodline would be a defensive bastion for uh, our orange player here but 
it seems like it's actually a blessing and a curse because while it does obscure a lot of the vision going around the going around the town center at the same time if orange wants to actually cut some wood uh he's gonna have to contend with the longbows coming in from blue so not able to get that wood um uh safely uh probably losing a ton of villagers in the process we do see seven uh seven units lost for our orange player here unfortunately i'm not able to tell if it's villagers loss or military units lost but my guess is it's villagers lost i did see some villager units getting sniped out by those longbows here longbows of course are known to have incredible range um can i actually see their range no i cannot uh or uh, red on the black back here it's still fighting with these horsemen trying to find some raids unfortunately uh, a lot of their horsemen is going to be going down to uh the spearmen from yellow uh, as as we saw before yellow already got the castle age timing off the first player to hit the castle age relatively early actually i need to make sure i set my timer on my timer is currently off let's see what what time we're at in the game 12 minutes so he actually hit the castle age i think around the 10 minute mark very very fast castle and he had a lot of spot here on the map so definitely playing his a game here getting a lot of presence here uh and able to defend the back of purple's base which is really nice uh purple's gonna really appreciate that uh, is it just me or is this map a little bit bigger than normal? I can't tell. Um, this might be a gigantic size map and not a large size map. We do see a small skirmish where pink uh, pink and blue longbowmen were uh, trading back and forth. We do we do also have a pink uh, uh, English player on the other side of the map. And we do see that Pagey has enough resources going for a castle age potentially. He does have two town centers up. Will he go for castle age? That is a forward white tower right next to Orange's base saying, I'm going to help you defend. Meanwhile, Orange has positioned 12 javelin. Uh, 10 javelin throwers inside of his Saharan trade network. Those javelin throwers are not able to... Okay, they're finally getting pulled out. They're saying, hey, I see all these archers coming out in the front of the field. I also need to participate in this and let's see if I can help skirmish at, as well. Uh, on the other hand, Blue is the only person with ranged units on his side of the map. Um, we do see Onabagesha and Samra and Spearman. A very solid defense from the Teal player here. Uh, Orange has Spearman as well. So almost uh four so all four armies are here ranged units from three of the players whereas on the other side uh we only see let's see we have two guys going into horsemen and one guy going into longbows he spots out the white tower says you're not getting this up not with four villagers not on my count uh and he's sniping out the spear sniping out the longbows that will be the white tower going down i don't think he i think he canceled it before he lost any resources this is a very good cavalry charge in the front line here able to hit those javelin throwers but not able to stop uh everything because there's so many infantry and spearmen and just a lot of defensive power here this might be a painful loss for our yellow and green players all the cavalry going down that might even be the king getting popped that is the king getting popped it has the same sound as jean d'arc getting popped we finally see orange entering the battle now this is interesting uh, I mentioned earlier, this wood line is going to be a defensive bastion, right? And we did we did see the enemy team here, the northern team, not the enemy team, the northern team had to split their forces. Two players going to the south, two players going to the north. Unfortunately, that split of forces means that the defense, the defending players can, can concentrate three players in the south and then uh, and then quickly move into the north to defend both sides uh, w without much difficulty on their end now there has been a lot of military units lost i wish i could see a more clear graph on how much was lost exactly but we do see 55 killed a staggering number uh by the blue player heavily invested in the feudal age still only one tc on english comparison in, in, in contrast to the pink player who who's once again trying to go for a white tower it has to cancel it. another villager lost Pagey, if you want to get this white tower up you either have to position it when it's not uh, under immediate threat like that or it's like further in the back maybe even in back in the back of orange Orange's base here. Uh, Green now has knights. He's transitioned from horsemen into knights, playing the English basically like the Rus. Two town centers. Uh, now with the form of the King's Palace serving as the second town center. I like that play. A lot of early harassment by those horsemen now transitioning into the King's Palace for a mid-game boom. A lot of villagers not uh, farming though. Just finished the berries. Uh, we do see the Abbey of Kings producing a second king uh, able to heal up those knights. Getting a lot of value from that. Uh, and the White Tower is finally going up once again. Not enough villagers. Eight villagers is a little bit low here. If you, This is a very high priority White Tower. If you want to get that up safely you're going to have to uh, send even more villagers. Uh, hopefully it doesn't get spotted by the enemy team let's take a look and see what pr uh, pranav is focused on he's focused on building this ram that's one ram uh, placed down here not enough macro on wood to get more rams a little bit too much gold flow i wonder if he he has his upgrades here yes he does have both feudal upgrades not really looking to age up at all here uh, although by this time we do have three players on his team 
in the castle age and all four players on the enemy team are still in the feudal age so this is going to be a bit of a challenge for our southern team here that being said red is doing his best rogerino is trying to raid he's hitting both green and purple at the same time saying you guys do not get to expand out on the map not while i have horsemen still patrolling these areas you did deny me from raiding through the front line here so i'm going to raid all the way around it through the back this map does look a little bit bigger than normal i wonder if they set it to gigantic because these these distances are a bit unreasonable i'm not gonna lie this does not seem like the normal uh distances i wonder if they changed that setting um all right so we do see four rams up the white tower is also up so keep in mind uh, we now have Paigey in the castle age he's the first and only player on this side of the map uh, able to hit uh, the castle age uh, has a ton of resource float here in the food category uh, that's one ram already down wow the ram died so fast i think all the cavalry died uh, to pay for oh my god a devastating double mangonel shot squashes six druganu from the jushi player in an instant uh once again another mango shell shot goes off the top rope but it misses uh, the longbows are pulling back they're saying i need to get inside this white tower when you garrison longbowmen inside the white tower just like any other unit it will Will allow the white tower to shoot additional units now a very strong mass from all of our team all of our players here those mangonels are going to be the difference though they're just simply doesn't the the, the uh, southern team doesn't have an answer to the mangonels and at the same time green is saying you can take that fight in the front i'm gonna go ahead and take your villagers in the back this is a lot of villagers lost by the pink player that's an entire farm might even be a second farm under risk a huge mangonel shot another squad of jushi going down uh flame just sending his samurai into death oh my god the mangonels are just squashing the pink players long was we do see a flank coming in from orange but oh that's not what you want to do you don't want to split your forces here you actually you want to position yourself to defend and that's a huge lot oh my god that's like that's like 12 javelin throwers down and in an instant the mangonel dealing so much damage we do see red trying to raid the houses in the back but this is not going to be doing enough damage uh we there's so much loss the first sprinkle comes out but it's so low already there's no answer to the eh, eh, oh my god no you got to produce more sprinkles there's since there's only one player now there's two players in the castle age you need sprinkles to, to take care of these mangonels or cavalry since all since three players are going into archers one player went into went, went into infantry for the southern team there's just no answer to this mangonel this is the absolute worst thing that could possibly happen uh, for our southern team here as well the grand Fulani corral has come up but already it is going to be under threat it's trying to produce food from these cows but these cows need to start migrating fast we talked about that grand that grand Fulani migration the great Fulani jihad it needs to happen these cows need to start migrating south because this Fulani corral is going to be under threat because there's just no military able to defend this northern position and the Rams are just working tirelessly now keep in mind in the recent patch rams are now only 200 wood they are a little bit easier to kill now keep in mind uh, by melee units we see red continuing to try to harass with this horseman on the side sidelines here trying to divert attention as much as possible from this front line but blue is so invested in this feudal age the only player still in the feudal age uh at this point well along with the red player uh but but just like these rams because they're so cheap they're so spammable they're able to just push in orange has already migrated his villagers at this point i think i, I actually i'm curious how, where orange's villager count is looking 35 34 villagers at the 20 minute mark is not looking so good uh this is a ram going down by the sofas i do like that these are castle age sofas uh very well defended they don't have the uh they don't have the imported armor upgrade no they do have the imported armor upgrade they don't have their standard upgrades uh so not quite fully in oh wait actually does he have it no he does have uh age feudal age upgrades very strong sofas but the knights coming in from the ottoman wow i gotta say i'm impressed with ben's play here microing now three mangonels along with all this cavalry these knights are just going to be doing way too much damage uh to the other team and uh the javelin throws are coming out i like seeing all this production coming out from uh from harrison here but just a handful of javelin throws is not what you want to see against a mass of knights here this is four spahi and six knights keep in mind green with a huge mass of knights has been patrolling the backwaters raiding pretty much all three of the back players so while harrison has been feeling it the roughest he's all oh my god wait actually pizza is just relentless a huge massive knights in the front and in the back he's got, probably got like 30 knights at least uh patrolling these waters just knights out coming out the wazoo i think this is gonna be game ladies and gentlemen for the southern team i'm not sure what they can do to come back from this a total destruction of the cow pit uh the Fulani corral is no longer a thing those cows need to start migrating fast uh red is trying to harass with some horsemen but these horsemen are paling in comparison to what green can do with those knights along with the king these knights can heal their 
they're like French knights on steroids with that heel, um, or maybe a cheaper uh, French, uh, French knight mask. And we do see our first surrender coming out. Harrison is out of the game. Uh, second player going out. This is the southern team conceding. Good game played. Uh, definitely a devastating series of uh, decisions. I love the aggression from the blue player in the front, as well as the Ottoman player sending out those mangonels absolutely no answer to those mangonels that's what changed this game um yeah just in general very coordinated team I, and i really appreciate how they were able to figure out uh how to co how to combine their efforts and play to their civs advantages that being said the nor the northern t the northern team definitely high rolled with the spawn points having your english player in the front on this map is just so strong having your malian player in the front is just so weak so uh not a lot you can do in that situation um i'm gonna go ahead and join the call and see how the players are feeling first off northern team you were able to to win the first 4v4 in-house gorge on the do a big server how do you feel right now uh do i have a representative speaking for the northern team i want to I take full credit for this game as the igl of the team all right i determined what everyone's gonna build who we're gonna push and i told him to make that mango all right i'm a, <laughs> I'm a genius that's all you gotta know i'm a genius all right that is our auto produced <laughs> coming from our blue english player who stayed in feudal the whole game massing nothing but longbows uh very very aggressive well played by uh him and his team for sure now coming in from the southern team you guys had a slightly less advantageous spawn point where with your malian player in the front uh you you probably wish that you had your english player in the front instead how do you guys feel about that game that you and your performance in it whoa 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 whoa, whoa. you had your sushi player all the way in the back all right it does not matter yeah, I mean, I think we uh, we we tried to make a lot more military early on. Um, didn't have the anti siege for the mangonels. Yeah, the yeah. mangonels when they came out, they oh man, yeah. they, they took out the Juga news. They took out the javelin throwers. Those yep. were some big shots. Yep. Um, 